secure shell. The secure shell or SSH protocol was created in 1995 to prevent sniffing of Telnet and R login traffic at Helsinki University of Technology. SSH is encrypted and Telnet and R login were both not encrypted and still aren't encrypted. So the SSH protocol uses the Diffie-Hellman key exchange for key generation that it then uses to symmetrically encrypt data. Many programs use SSH to create tunnels and transfer data securely. The SSH package is normally, or the packages are normally installed on a CentOS or other Linux system by default. However, if you want to install them or take a look at them, they are the OpenSSH server package, which provides the server, OpenSSH, which provides some of the tools, the OpenSSH clients, which provides well, clients, and then another useful package, which is not actually SSH, but is closely tied to it, is rsync. Rsync allows you to synchronize data on two ends, so a client and server can synchronize data over SSH. We can do it itself without SSH as well. When you're configuring SSH, there are a couple of configuration files. The main SSH configuration files are in the following two files. You have the etc ssh sshd underscore config and the same thing without the D. The one with the D is for the server and the regular one, the SSH underscore config, is for the client. Individuals can also have additional override type information for their clients in their .SSH directory, their home directory. So some common configuration changes you would see on the server end is disabling root logins which is very important in situations where you're constantly being attacked by people trying to log in your system. If you don't want them to have the option of doing a brute force login, you can just disable root logins and then they have to log in as a different user and then switch over somehow using sudo or su. Um, you could change the port number. Sometimes people change it from 22 to something else and then they log in with that number. You can disable password authentication which means you have to use keys to get in, which makes it more secure. This is very common. Um, Amazon Web Services does this by default. It makes it more secure and less likely to be hacked because, once again, you can't do the brute force logins. And you can also do changes to things like X11. X11 is your GUI system. You could um, set it up so that you can export your GUI or not export your GUI. The secure cell service, so SSH is on Linux systems, open SSH, and it can be controlled using the systemctl command. You can use systemctl with start, stop, restart, status. You can enable or disable if you wanted to either not start boot time or not start boot time. And so systemctl start, and then the service name, which is sshd, and you can use the dot service if you want. By default, SSH is allowed through the firewall. To make changes, you can use the firewall CMD command, and you can either add the service. If it's not there, you can remove the service, or if you want to, you can, well, additionally, you can make the rules permanent with the dash dash permanent. Note that if you use the dash dash permanent option, it will not change the active firewall settings. It will only change the configuration files, so when the firewall is restarted, it will have the new settings in place. You can verify the services are present in the firewall as well using the firewall-cmd command with the dash dash list dash all option to see what's in the firewall. When you connect to unknown servers, SSH prompts you to accept the public key that it is presented with. Keys are remembered and stored in a file called known hosts and remote keys will change very rarely. It's only when the machine is replaced or new keys are generated, or if someone's trying to hack you and there's some kind of a man in the middle attack where they're trying to impersonate the server. You can manually add and delete entries. This is useful when you trust the changes, but not so good when you don't trust them. SSH has the ability to use keys to authenticate. In order to authenticate using keys, the client machine needs to create a public-private key pair set. The public key needs to be installed in the server, 
and the server has a authorized key file in each user's directory that can be used and then you can just log in directly using the authorized key. You can create the key pairs using the SSH key gen command and then you can install them either using the SSH copy ID command or you can manually copy them over and then put them into the authorized keys file. Here are a couple example incantations of things you can type in. You can type in SSH key gen to generate keys. You can tell it what type with the minus T option. You can copy the key over, the public key over to the server using the SSH copy ID command. You can um, manually copy it using SCP. And once you get it copied over there, you need to log into that machine and use the cat command or some other command to get it into the authorized keys file. If you want to, you can also tunnel. Here are a couple of exciting tunneling incantations. The tar command can create, well, archive files. And this command, basically the first command right there, um, you're creating an archive file and the destination of that file is actually the standard out. So that kind of works. And then what we're doing is we are piping this into the SSH command, which is then on the other end using the cat command and redirecting its standard in into a file. So what we're doing is creating a tar archive that is being put into a file on the remote machine. And you can look at the rest of these things. They are kind of uh, weird incantations, but it gives you an idea of some of the things that SSH can do. If you want to troubleshoot SSH, you want to make sure you, that you can connect to the machine. That's usually one of the biggest things. You could either have the address wrong or you could have the host name wrong. You want to make sure the service is running. If it's not running, then that can be a problem. You want to make sure the firewall is open and you can get through it. You want to make sure the remote host is up and so you can ping it. You can use Nmap to scan it to make sure the SSH port is visible. And you can also be on the server and look at the logs to see if you're having trouble logging in. And this is a brief little overview of SSH.